here are the six of the best ETFs that make you insanely rich. And these ETFs are not going to be the most famous Vanguard's VU, Charles Schwab's SCHD, or even the most popular ETFs that you see and hear about all the time. Because there are some ETFs that are as good, if not better, than VU or SCHD, depending on your risk tolerance, investing time horizon, and your long-term goals. So for the six ETFs, I'm going to be breaking them down into three different categories of ETFs that will give you the highest percent chance possible of making the most amount of money in the long run. I'm also going to score each ETF with a scorecard so you don't get bored at all where I'll classify each ETF based off of total return potential, volatility, and total risk, and a couple of reasons why I love the ETF. So without further ado, let's get started. The first category is broad market ETFs and kicking us off is SPLG. SPLG tracks the S&P 500 index representing 500 of the largest and best performing companies that represent the US economy. SPLG holds some of the best performing names such as Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, and Amazon, and 496 other stocks. Its performance is quite impressive, posting over 10% average annual returns since 2005. Why this is the most slept on ETF in my opinion is because a lot of people flock to Vanguard's VU and in my opinion SPLG is as good if not better than VU. The thing with VU and SPLG is that they track the exact same index, that being the S&P 500. But SPLG wins by having a lower expense ratio or lower fee than VU and it also has a lower share price than VU as well so if your investing brokerage does not allow fractional shares then you're in for quite the treat. On our scorecard SPLG receives a medium to high for total return potential because the S&P 500's returns is the average of the market. But average does not mean anything bad, it's just a very hard index to beat, so keep that in mind. In terms of volatility, I would say it's medium, because it does have a mixture of growth and value stocks. For the risk, I would say it's low to medium, because it's not as low of risk as something like treasury bonds, but it's also not as high of a risk as some growth ETFs. And since 1957, the S&P 500 has only went to the moon, so that's that. The second broad market ETF is more of a hybrid between a broad market and a growth ETF. And that ETF is VUG or Vanguard's S&P 500 growth ETF. Honestly, I really didn't know what ETF to choose for this other ETF because I didn't want to talk about VTI or VT. I feel like I talked about that a lot. So I chose VUG. VUG invests in stocks in the S&P 500 index composed of only growth stocks from this index. So its holdings total 232 stocks, which is plenty for this fund since you also have other different sectors within it to keep you diversified besides that large cap tech exposure. Making this a very solid choice between a hybrid of broad market and a growth ETF as it holds a higher percentage allocation to the best performing companies like Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, and Amazon. Vug receives an A rating from Seeking Alpha in terms of expense ratio and it has returned over 16% annually since 2010, largely outperforming the S&P 500. Taking a look at our scorecard, the total return potential is high, which it says on Vanguard's website, and the risk and volatility is also going to be high, which is also on Vanguard's website. The second category is dividend ETFs, and kicking us off is FDVV, Fidelity's High Dividend ETF. FDVV invests in large cap and mid cap dividend paying companies that are expected to continue to pay and grow their dividends. The dividend growth of FDVV is not perfect at all, but the trend is still on the rise. Comparing true dividend growth to SCHD is as perfect as it gets for those dividend investors. 
FDVV has nearly a 3% dividend yield, which is insane for an ETF that mostly holds tech stocks while also playing a little defensive. With great names like Apple, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, and Broadcom, and a A- expense grade by Seeking Alpha. All this combines for great stock performance of over 12% annually since the fund's inception and has just barely etched out SEHD in terms of returns for our scorecard, FDVV gets a medium grade for total return potential, volatility score of low to medium, and a risk score of low to medium as well. The second ETF in the dividend category is DGRO, iShares Core Dividend Growth ETF. Morningstar has awarded DGRO a gold medal, and this fund is really slept on in my opinion. DGRO invests in US stocks that have a history of consistently growing dividends that are broadly diversified across many different industries. DGRO has grown its dividend every single year over the past decade and has a solid dividend yield. So if you want a true fund that grows its dividends every single year that is perfect for a dividend snowball, then this one is one to take a look at and research further because it's super underrated, like I said, in my opinion. Some of the best stocks in this fund are JP Morgan, AbV, Home Depot, and the usual Apple and Microsoft duo. Since the fund's inception, it has returned over 10% annually that has beaten SEHD in returns over the last 1 year, 3 year, and even the 10 year, but not over the past 5 years. DGRO also has a low expense ratio, awarding it an A plus grade by Seeking Alpha, and the scorecard in my opinion is going to be the exact same as FDVV, making these two ETFs great alternatives to SEHD. The third category is growth ETFs and kicking us off is XLK, the technology select sector SPDR fund. XLK basically invests in the technology sector of the S&P 500, so it's 100% invested in tech stocks only. Making this a hyper aggressive and even hyper growth ETF in my opinion, because it gives you exposure to semiconductors, IT, AI and software companies like Nvidia, AMD, Oracle, Adobe, and Qualcomm. The performance of XLK since 1998 has boasted under 10% returns, but that includes the tech bubble of the late 1990s, but over the past 10 years, it has returned over 20% annually and has absolutely destroyed the S&P 500 thanks to tech and growth stocks being in favor over the past decade compared to those large value stocks. The expense ratio is low, earning it an A grade by Seeking Alpha, and this fund is a very high risk, high reward type play for those with a higher risk tolerance and hopefully a long time horizon in their investing journey. So the scorecard is going to be high for that category. The volatility is high as well since the fund only invests in tech or basically growth stocks and doesn't have any other sectors in the stock market so you aren't diversifying at all. And with that, the risk of this ETF is also going to be high. The next growth ETF is VONG, Vanguard's Russell 1000 Growth ETF. Vong invests in stocks in the Russell 1000 Growth Index, a broadly diversified index predominantly made up of growth stocks of large US companies. The fund's fees are very low with an A rating scorecard and the holdings is mostly in tech stocks but also has other great sectors of the stock market included in this ETF. With names like Google, Meta, Eli Lilly, and Tesla. Vong has returned over 16% annually since the fund's inception in 2010, making this a very strong player compared to the S&P 500, which it has largely outperformed by a wide margin. For VONG scorecard, I'm going to give it a high for total return potential, a high for volatility, and a medium to high for its total risk since it does have other sectors of the stock market that isn't only technology. 
Now, a big shout out to my YouTube members, a part of my gold VIP membership group. So much love and so much perks are in that membership group. So go ahead and check that out. Now, if you guys like this video, please give it a like because this cute puppy did. And right here is going to be a video regarding my own over $100,000 ETF portfolio. And right here is going to be a video on exactly when to buy ETFs to get the best overall returns. Now, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Continue to crush in the stock market and take it easy. Peace.